Hey, this is Kendrick with worldmedicalschool.org. We're going to talk about polyhydramnios and oligohydramnios. So poly means a lot in hydramnios is amniotic fluid. So a lot of fluid versus a little fluid, oligohydramnios. A lot of fluid is defined by an uh, uh, amniotic fluid index above 20 centimeters on ultrasound. We'll talk about how you get the AFI in a second, whereas the oligohydramnios AFI is under 5 centimeters. So if we're thinking about causes, wh what, could make, uh, what could make a little bit of fluid versus a lot of fluid in the amniotic sac here? So um, one simple, simple way to uh, look at it would be to picture yourself in a big balloon full of water and uh, if you are unable to uh, get any fluids into your body, um, then that would uh, lead to there being more fluid outside of the body. Um, whereas if you are unable, if you're able to get uh, fluid into your body but not out of the body, then that would be less fluid outside in your balloon that you're in um, and more fluid inside. So that's the simplistic way to look at it, and it's probably not really an accurate way to look at it, but it's a helpful way to remember that if you have problems to uh, your upper GI system, like duodenal atresia or a TE fistula, a tri tracheoesophageal fistula, that means you're not going to be getting fluids in. So this fluid is stuck outside, and so you get, uh, you get a lot of fluid on the outside. Um, again, that's, that's not the necessarily the real reason that that's happening, but it's an easy way to remember it. Uh, whereas with oligohydramnios, if you have, uh, for example, complete renal agenesis, then you can't get the fluid outside. So you're, you're uh, gulping the amniotic fluid down, but you can't get it out because uh, you don't have kidneys to, to put it out with, or you have some kind of uh, genitourinary uh, obstruction that's keeping you from getting the fluid out. So those types of things um, can contribute to uh, polyhydramnios and oligo oligohydramnios. Another thing that uh, that is fairly easy to picture is this uh, multiple gestation or the twin-twin transfusion question. So as you see in the picture here, um, if you have two babies that are sharing the same placenta, they may not be sharing equally, which I know is hard to imagine if you have two kids that they might not share equally. But, uh, but that's the case in some of these kids where uh, one of them is getting uh, more than enough fluid and one of them might be not getting enough fluid. So we call that the twin-twin transfusion. So... Um, there's also maternal diabetes, which I'm not sure the mechanism on that one. Um, and let's see, uh, a rupture of membranes, which uh, is can be a normal uh, reason that we have oligohydramnios. But if it happens too early, of course, that's not a good thing. So the diagnosis is made with this uh, AFI, the um, amniotic fluid index. The way that they do this is I, I tried to look for a good picture of this, but I couldn't find one. Um, they, on the ultrasound, uh, they measure the deepest pits in the in four quadrants. So, um, so basically, they're they're measuring uh, from the the top of the uh, amniotic sac down to the the deepest level. So this, as you can imagine, is a little bit dependent on the position of the baby, which makes it a little bit inaccurate, but it's one of the best things we have. So uh, you take those uh, the deepest pits in each quadrant and you add them together. And if that number is greater than 20 centimeters, then you're polyhydramnios. If it's less than five, it's oligohydramnios. Of course, while you're in there with the ultrasound, you're gonna wanna look for some abnormalities, like, uh, for example, the, um, I don't know if you can see duodenal atresia on that, but uh, but certainly uh, renal agenesis you'd be able to pick up. And those would be important things for the parents to know. So the treatment 
uh, you got to treat the underlying cause. Let's go back to the causes page. If uh, if the mother does have just uh, diabetes and you treat the diabetes, um, isoimmunization can of course be uh, prevented with uh, with Rogam. Um, and uh, and the other thing that oligohydramnios uh, can be treated with is just uh, adequate fluids. So some of the complications if we uh, have these conditions would be preterm labor with oligo or with polyhydramnios, fetal malpresentation, which I think should probably apply to both. I'm not sure, but certainly polyhydramnios and cord prolapse. And the oligohydramnios uh, presents with a, a, a greater increase in mortality than polyhydramnios and just more problems in general. You get musculoskeletal abnormalities, pulmonary hypoplasia, which both of those are actually part of this Potter syndrome. Potter syndrome is often used to describe um, the the characteristic facies and the pulmonary hypoplasia and other musculoskeletal abnormalities that are associated with complete renal agenesis. But, uh, but a lot of times people use it today just to mean uh, any, uh, any of those, cause, any of those uh, problems caused by oligohydramnios. And uh, umbilical cord compression and uh, intrauterine growth restriction, which we recently talked about. So thanks for our twin to twin picture by Kevin Dufenduck. And if you want to be involved, uh, if you would leave a comment below, particularly if you would leave a, a comment that uh, quizzes the next person watching the video on the content of the video, or you can go to worldmedicalschool.org backslash volunteer to get more involved. Thanks.